Hey right, guys, today's video is a unboxing and I guess showcase of everything that comes with the Aeons End expansion, The Void. This is an expansion to Aeons End War Eternal. The game originally came with two expansions bundled together as a Kickstarter, both The Void and Outer Dark, this one and a separate one called Outer Dark. And uh, I currently own War Eternal, The Outer Dark, and a totally standalone game called Into, shoot, what is it called? The New Age, I think? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just picked this up in the mail and really excited to open it. I consider myself not an expert on Aeon's End, but I've played probably about 30 games of it so far, varying between two to four players, and uh, I really like it. So excited to get this. Um, I'll just go right into it for the contents. I'm going to be doing this assuming that you know about Aeon's End in general, but if you do not... I have released other unboxing videos of Aeon's End War Eternal, which is the base game. Uh, you can also get the original Aeon's End, but I think War Eternal is a better place, a better game overall. And it's a standalone starting game. So War Eternal, great place to start. And if you wanted to continue the series, I would recommend the expansions, Outer Dark and this one, because they're meant for War Eternal. In theory, you can mix and match any amount of them, but like the, the original game, j j just called Aeon's End, had two expansions. Um, blanking on the names, there's the Depths and the Nameless, I want to say. Those are just my guesses. But I think I like the War Eternal set much more than, than what I've played of the original. So I'd probably say the expansions are the same. It's just a guess, though. So this is everything that comes with the expansion. Okay. Firstly, you get... Um, I guess I'll go into the spells first. I'll go into the cards before the characters. Because when I did the Outer Dark expansion, I think I did the characters first, and we didn't know what the starting cards were. So it's a bit confusing there. Alright, so the cards. Good. So, um, let's see. Firstly, you get some new spells. This is a Oh, these look like the starters. Okay. So, I'll go with these first. These are spells you can buy from the shop, probably. Yeah, it looks like it. So, there's Inner Fire. It uses a new Link mechanic. Link was technically in some of the other games. I think from After War Eternal, they added it into Legacy and New Age sets as in general. But basically, Link, you can put two spells on the same Breach. So, pretty efficient that way. Um, obviously, they're weaker and they're cheap. They're very cheap. Two cost is kind of insane for a shop item. But, uh... Eh, seems alright. I don't think the spell's that strong, honestly. Just reading it. But, who knows. Thermal Dart. It's another Link spell. This one actually sounds pretty solid. Three damage on a four cost is pretty average. But it has a bonus effect and Link benefit. So, looks good. Oh, by the way, you get four... I think you get five copies of each, right? Yeah. You have five copies of each spell. One, two, three, four. There's one back there. Thermal Dart, you get one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh. You can tell I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, back to the spells. I'm gonna ignore the starters. I'm on spells right now. You get a new spell, Resonate. It costs six. Deal four damage. Uh, sometimes deal three additional. I'm not a fan of this spell because I really like hyper compression, but some people might find uses out of it. I mean, 7 damage on a 6 cost is solid being meet the condition. 5 of that has Remnant on the art. Remnant is a character from the Outer Dark expansion. You get Conflagration, which is a Link spell, like I mentioned earlier. Cast, deal 2, gain 1. This is a solid one. Like, if you want an early game 1, I really don't think Inner Fire is the way to go. This just seems better to me, unlike all fronts. And it costs 1 more, but... Who cares? Conflagration, very solid spell, looks like. You get five of those. Fulminate. Well prepped, other spells you can do. Other spells you cast to deal one additional damage. Okay. This is pretty good. So honestly, if you, if you made like a whole link focused shop, this would absolutely be the way to go. I, uh, me and my friends, we like doing randomized shop. Or pseudo random, where we make sure all the costs are different. But it's otherwise, other than that, the shop is random. You get five of those. And I guess those are all the spells. Okay. Going 
going to start writing a bit out of order. Looks like the... Okay, gems. Here's the gems we get. We get Fossilized Scarab, Game 2 or Destroy. Um, seems alright. Uh, the Destroy part seems pretty weak because it's in hand. I think there's better methods of Destroy and better gems in general, but... In a randomized shop, like, this isn't underpowered, you know? It's not exceptional, but I always say randomized shop, so it's decent. So nice, fresh addition. Definitely different. You get seven of these, in the, seven gems in the shop. Pretty standard for all gems. I think all the gems have the same amount. All relics have the same amount, and all spells have the same amount in the shop. Dimensional key. This costs eight. Any ally draws two cards or destroy this. Take one. Ooh. So this kind of rewinds time a little bit. I can definitely see this being useful in like very end game cases where it comes down to that last turn. But honestly, the cost is so high. I just, I don't think I'd ever pick this up realistically. I mean, ally draws two cards is very good, but eight's too much for me, but interesting option. All the relics are always really interesting. I find in the games we play, we don't use the relics that often, but you know, just, they're nice. Of course, unless it's the broken ones, like Riddle Sphere or whatever. Uh, Eternity Charm. Focus, so it's a free focus. Reveal three, prep one. That's really good. That's pretty nuts. Wow, okay. Um, I mean, the breach has to be open, so keep that in mind. But five of them. It's a three cost, so I like that. So in general, with the expansion, you get one gem, two relics, one, two, three, four, five spells. They all seem interesting. You get new Nemesis cards, actually. Okay, now I'll go over the characters, actually. So the characters. Sorry, it's kind of all over the place, but I want to do it in a way where I guess it makes sense for people who know the game but don't know what the expansion contains so that you can have a better reference for everything. Okay. This character... This is way hard, hard to open this should be. All right, first character you get. You, you get two playable characters. First one you get is Sparrow. First starting card is Smolder right here. I'll put it for reference. Okay, so she starts with Smolder, four crystals, and then five crystals. Wow, so she has a really, really good gem setup. No sparks to... Uh, she can accelerate very easily. That said, looking at it, she does not have a one breach. And her breaches start closed, so she doesn't have a single open breach. Which makes Smolder... Oh no, here, you can cast Smolder without focusing. You can cast on a closed breach. Okay, so Smolder, it's just a spark that you can prep on a closed breach. Pretty necessary for her, I'd say. But wow, okay, just innately the 9 money seems very strong. Her ability, focus any player's breach 3 times. Or... An ally with no closed breaches draws three and preps three. Huh, five cost. Seems all right. So she's definitely going to go super hard on the money. She supports her allies by focusing their, in theory, focusing their most expensive breaches. So they get the four breach open with a plus one damage. Seems very solid of a character. Very unique for sure. Really interested to try her. She, I really like the, I mean, money is always the greed play, but she's she seems good. So you get that. Next character you get is Zaxos the Voidbringer. Zaxos is actually a character in the first Aeon's End. There's some lore stuff that, uh, oh yeah, all the characters come with lore on the back. But he basically becomes kind of uh, corrupted, I don't want to say. That might be a way to simplify it too much. But So this is a different version of Zaxos. He has a different ability, different play style than the other one from the base game. But it's the same character. So start off with one Pyre, unique card, four crystals, and then four crystals, one spark. So, kind of standard start. His unique spell, Pyre. It's a spark, deal one damage. But also, an ally may discard a card in hand, deal two. This seems really good for a four-player game. Like, absolutely fantastic for a four-player game. Having three damage early at the cost of... In theory, it's the cost of one spark that you can't cast. Like, it'll fix someone's hand in a way. Or minus one money from someone. It could even be yourself... Oh, no, no ally... Yeah, it can't be yourself. It has to be an ally. It says not any player. If it's any player, it could be you. But uh, three damage early. Very solid. His ability. 
Ally gains a charge and discards a random card in hand. Focus a breach. Oh, this is so weird. So this is one of those abilities that does like a little bit of everything, it looks like. Costs four charges, gives an ally one. So in a way, it only costs three charges. And it's better because you can give an ally a charge, which is better than you having one yourself in general, I think, because you can choose the ally. Again, I usually play four players. Like I play all the different games, but four players the most often. So looking at it from a four player perspective, that what, give one charge to someone is better than removing cost. So focus one of your breaches. Okay, gain a life, destroy a card. Pretty solid. I mean, you could spam this out for sure. Um, I think it's a nice utility ability. Get that. Cool. So those are the two characters to get. You also get two nemesis, nemeses, the Knight of Shackles and the Maiden of Thorns. And so the knight, um, the knight, he set up, okay. Huh, so this guy gets a breach. With breach tokens. Looks like that when he focuses, you can pay to unfocus, but if he focuses it open, then it's just open forever, it looks like. Looks like he can cast spells, kind of, in like a weird way. Okay, so it's a one-time effect. When he opens a breach, bad things happen. Fourth one is game over. Kind of typical. Interesting. What's really interesting is that he can pay money to unfocus his breach, which really makes him like a pay nemesis. Kind of like um, Wraithmonger from the Outer Worlds. I didn't care too much for Wraithmonger. But his the Wraithmonger's mechanic is you can pay money to, I guess, put his bad stuff back in order. So like... He keeps making more bad stuff happen consecutively, but if you pay a certain amount of money, and in this case it's all your charges, you just reset it. So like the counter goes back to the start. So Knight of Shackles, okay. I think it'll really just end up being he decelerates your deck growth more than anything else, which is not the most fun mechanic to be honest, but you know. So Wraithmonger comes with use his unique cards yes looks like this is it okay his unique nemesis cards starting at tier one you get okay so every turn this is a pretty strong for tier one to be honest this takes three orc focuses a breach that seems really strong for a tier one enemy three damage all right you get this um use four charges that's pretty hard to do Especially in the short time. Some unleashes or damage. Unleash, focus. Oh, that's weird. Any player focuses their breach three. I like that. There's always like a good or really bad but benefit. It's kind of like in the base set, there's a uh, there's an effect where it's like any player takes three and then they can add one card from the discard to hand or something like that. So I like that. This one's in. I, like, I really like these kind of effects. Tier two enemy. It's a chain sworn. So it's a forced focus and then continual damage and the damage is increased for each breach open. Okay, I, I like that idea. So the more breaches are open, it is worse. It's not just like a one and done effect like the card itself or his power itself seemed to be. To discard three pop spells, then yep, the same mechanic. It's worse the more breaches he has open. Cool. Pretty, I mean, it's kind of easy to discard, but you only have two turns again. The three turn ones are more leeway, but two, it could come down to luck. You could just proc it. And the last tier two is the route. Does a lot of damage, or it automatically opens breach one. Wow, okay, so it kind of forces the game in a way. I think at this point, the breach would probably be open regardless, in most cases, but it's nice that there's a kind of force mechanic. Okay, tier three enemies. Deathless Legion, 18 health, very tanky guy. Players cannot... Oh, so players cannot unfocus his breach, basically. While he's out. Huh. Damage. So pretty low damage. It's more so the passive effect that's a big deal. But he's really beefy, so he's going to take up a lot of damage if you want to kill him. Damage that could be going to kill the boss. The boss who has 70 health. Okay. There's the end of all. Discard, destroy three cards. In, oh, that's a really hefty cost. Knight of Shackles opens its closed breach with lowest. Okay, so it's another forced open. So I feel like you have to pay that that very hefty cost if can. Ooh, that's pretty hard to do. Probably the money guy will have to sacrifice himself for it. And invade. 
If Knight of Shackles Breach 2 is closed, it opens it. Okay, otherwise for each open breach. Place the most recently discarded power card into play. No, ooh. So that's pretty nuts. That could actually destroy a game. That's very powerful. I could print this back. I could put, like, you know, two power cards. These are power cards, by the way. Pretty vicious. But, uh... Huh. Alright. And his breaches. These are the breaches it comes with, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so the Knight of Shackles. He comes with a breach mat. Looks like it's the same front and back. And on the breach mat, you're supposed to put these breaches on it. One, two, three, four. Cool. Cost three, four, five, six. So definitely more expensive than a player's breach. If that makes sense. And it says the bad effects on each. So very clear. Very uh, straightforward what you have to do. I think this is probably the other boss. Yeah, I think that's something else. Okay, so these are all for the, except for the top part, these are for the United Shackles. Cool. That's everything you get with him. And you get the other boss, the Maiden of Thorns. <laughs> Let's see what she does. Sorry, I really don't know what the enemies are, so I'm reading them off the bat, learning them same as you. You want to actually be a bit more informed to me than me at the time of reading. <laughs> Let's see. She gains a Nemesis token on leash. This is the setup rules for her. <laughs> okay. So she kind of, uh... <laughs> don't really know what she does, to be honest. Okay, so rules. So she adds thorns to the supply marker. And to the, to the shops. And... Oh, so she kind of just... She kind of just ruins the supply shop. Hmm. So she goes from least expensive to most expensive. And she kind of ruins them with these tokens. And if, you, if you, all the shops are empty, then you lose. So I think she must have some way to diminish the shop. And these are the tokens, it looks like. Player of damage, grateful damage. Okay, well, this one I'm a bit confused on. It'll probably become more clear with the cards, but sorry about that. <laughs> These are her tier one cards. She starts off with Aether Barb, Power 2. You can't get rid of it. Unleash, the players collectively discard in hand. You could the number of cards in the Thorn Supply Pile. Okay. So she wants a lot of cards in the shop. Oh, no, no, okay. <laughs> so it sounds like she wants a lot of cards in the shop. So you negate that by buying things out to make the shop smaller. But if the shop is too small, you'll, you'll lose instantly. So there's a balance there, it seems like. Nettle wing. If the thorn supplies a spell, advance, otherwise takes two. Okay, that's pretty cool. It pushes it forward sometimes. Huh, okay, six health, doable. Pretty moderate, fair for a six, boss, a six health tier one minion. <laughs> tier one att attack, unleash. If the, sword, if the supplies a spell, advance, so push it forward. Otherwise, you discard that spell. Pretty weak, to be honest, because the Unleash is just, uh, gains one Nemesis token, and you need two tokens to Impale, so, eh, not the worst. I think her Unleash effect is pretty weak, compared to a lot of other bosses. Ooh, tier 2, 10 health, that's a, that's tanky-ish. Flip the Thorn Marker over Unleash. Okay, so the Thorn Marker, it can go from Player to Gravehold, so it swaps who it deals damage to. Yeah, gruesome feast. You can't stop it. Unleash, destroy all the cards in the two supply piles with the fewest cards. Wow, so um, this could actually be really bad if you proc it early. In theory, like if it's the not if it's not the top card of the two pile, it's not really going to affect what you buy as much as it's going to affect um, how the game plays for the nemesis. So that's nice. Pretty cool. The way that you can't get rid of it is pretty threatening, but I kind of like that. Quill fiend, eight health. Low health fish. Player with the most expensive gem discards it and takes two damage. Oh, so it targets the money person. That's cool. It's kind of like the opposite of the, uh, the mage slayer in the base one. And the, the mage slayer attacks the guy with the most open breaches. 
or this one will target the money guy. Cool. That was definitely needed, I think. I almost wish this was like a base card to go in the default Nemesis deck. Oh well. To discard, destroy two open breaches. Ooh. That's a very hefty discard. Oh, it's a tier three, that's why. Okay. We're on the tier threes. That's a really hefty discard cost. Power one, unleash twice. Any player draws two cards and then destroys all cards that cost two or more. That's brutal. Um, it just occurs to me that power one, you're not going to get rid of it most of the time anyway. Because I, I believe one person has to have the two open breaches. So that's rough. No, no way about it, that's rough. Shrapnel Storm. Destroy all of the cards in the two supply piles with the fewest cards. Unleash twice. That could be very threatening. The supply pile has 12 cards total. Or no. One, two, three. Nine cards. Yeah, the supply shop has nine cards. So this destroys two of the nine. Assuming you didn't empty out any before. So I think you really want to keep the shop having at least one of each in it. Writhing Obelisk. That's such a weird art. Look at that. Okay, persistent. Any player suffers damage equal to the cost of the top card of the Thorn Supply Pile. Oh god. So if this goes up to like... This could in theory do up to 8 damage. If you're... Depending on how screwed you are. 8 damage on one guy. That's game ending right there. 16 health too. Wow. Brutal. So yeah, we solved the mystery of what these are. These are for... Um, Knight of Shackles, this is for the Maiden of Thorns. Alright, and so that's almost everything the game comes with. In addition to this, it includes randomizers, obviously. Um, I, I randomize my shop all the time. So, randomizers for each of the shops. Not sh the new shop items, which is one gem, two relics, one, two, three, four, five spells. Pretty spell heavy. I mean, the game in general is pretty spell heavy, so I guess that makes sense. Randomizers, and nice dividers for each. My box might actually not be able to fit this now I think about it. Huh. Did not think about that. Knight of Shackles. Hidden of Thorns. Thick paper, but paper nonetheless. So yeah, um, actually cardstock maybe is a better way to put it. Any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll let you know. Well, I might not be able to play a game for a while due to... COVID really stopping the in-person groups, but yeah, I'll put whatever impressions I have in the description as I can add it. Otherwise, questions, let me know. Um, I paid about seventeen eighty for this, I think, at the time, which is a fair price. I don't think it's a very good price. It's fair. I think the expansion retails for like 20 but something like that. Yeah, um, I'll put a link in the comments. And until next time, guys, hope this was useful.